Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop and our May workshop blog. Roll the intro. So in this month's blog I wanted to do an update on uh, the channel, how it's growing, and a few of the videos I posted this month. Then I wanted to uh, show you some of the YouTube channels that I've been watching. I'm sure, like me, many of you are avid woodworking YouTube followers. And this month, I found some really, really nice channels. And then at the end, I've just got a couple of things that you may be interested in buying over the bank holiday weekend if you're going out and going shopping or going anywhere that you can get tools. And at the very end, a little bit of audience participation needed in the comments. So let's get this video started and a review of the month of May in the Garage Workshop. It's been a really, really busy month in the Garage Workshop and views for my videos this month have reached over 5,000, which is absolutely fantastic. A massive thank you for all of the support. So I've done a couple of Mitosaur builds this month. Uh, I also did the Mitosaur Dust Extraction, which was my last video. I did my American Tool Hall review. And of course, my favorite video that I've run this month was the uh, Maker Central review, the Maker Central review, which had over 700 views. It was by far one of the best videos that the channel has ever had. And also, from my personal viewpoint, it was really nice to have the support for a video that was very, very different. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the uh, description, but something very different, a video I really enjoyed making, and it was great to get some of the fantastic feedback, not just on that video, but on the fact that you liked the fact there were different things on the channel. It was a really great experience going to Maker Central as well, and I was so lucky to manage to grab some time with Peter from uh, 10 Minute Tool Workshop and Stuart, obviously, from Popper proper DIY, both of channels that I featured on here before. So my subscribers as we stand is currently standing at 932. So I'm 68 off of my magical thousand, which I'm trying desperately to get to. Uh, I've had 38 subscribers this month and a watch time, a total watch time of 600 hours. When if you think, I think that's only 500, that's only five videos. That is an incredible amount. So a massive, massive thank you to all of you that are regularly watching, regularly comment and subscribing. And I've got some really interesting projects coming up in the Garage Workshop over the next month. One of which is going to be uh, a build for a gate. I need to build a new gate. Lots of skills that I've never done before. Quite nervous, not going to lie. I've got another haul video coming up, which will be uh, next week's video, I think. And... I'm actually going to take the plunge and make a quality piece of furniture for the inside of the house, not just something you're going to see out here. So I'm going to really, really try hard to produce a bit of quality that I can look at every day and not pick up in the imperfections and think, why on earth did I try that? So some great videos coming up in this month's Garage Workshop. OK, let's move on to the channels I've been looking at this month. So the first channel that I want to draw your attention to this week is quite a large channel, over 830,000 subscribers, and it's called The Wood Whisperer. There's over 600 videos on this channel, and it is a real eclectic mix of lots of different things. There's uh, reviews on there, there's how-tos, there's tutorials, and a real mixture of filming as well. There's a video on there um, about making cutting boards, I think it is. Yeah, beginner's cutting board from the woodworker's point of view, and it's all shot from a point of view so you can see exactly how it's made. Um, I'm not sure how long the channel's been running, but what I like about it is there's so many different varieties of video that everyone I've looked so far, I've learned something from, and I think, oh, yeah, that's quite interesting. And then it sends me to another video on the same channel. So a really, really nice uh, channel. Again, a bigger one. Some of the ones I'm going to recommend this month aren't all this size, but if you haven't heard of the Wood Whisperer uh, and you're in the market for something new, then check it out. You might like it. The second channel that I'm going to bring your attention to this month is this slightly weird one called Beef Master. Now, this is not your usual woodworking channel. It's got 22,000 subs, so it's a popular channel, but not your normal channel. It's got a whole range of videos, everything from uh, building shelves to how to fix a cracked iPhone screen, 
to how to sharpen a lawnmower blade. It really is an eclectic mix. It's a sort of one-stop shop of everything. And I've watched a few of these videos now. I love the style and I love the mixture of things. And a lot of American YouTube channels I find can be a little bit samey. This one is really good. It's got a real diverse range of things. So if you're looking, maybe not necessarily tutorial based videos, although they are on there, but if you're looking for something slightly different, a little bit of an escapism, then I recommend you check it out. It is a really, really nicely made channel and the video editing, etc., really good. So worth a shout. For my third channel, I've gone for another highly subscribed channel in the Samurai Carpenter. Now, I do confess, I've literally only found this channel in the last couple of days, and I know there's well over 400 videos on it, and I've only scratched the surface literally and watched a couple. But what I like about this channel and the videos on it is, there is a vast array of things, and things that I would never, as a woodworker, have the opportunity to do, have the inclination to do, and certainly have the money to do. There are some great videos on here, really well made, the content is really nicely laid out, and it's a little bit of sort of woodworker escapism, if I can say that. Um, as I said, I've not watched a huge amount, but the ones I've watched have been really, really varied, and again, it's a channel that I'm gonna spend a lot more time diving into over the next few weeks. So, The Samurai Carpenter is my next recommendation for you, fellow woodworkers. And the next one could not be more of a contrast to The Samurai Carpenter. We've got Mellow Pine, which it describes itself as being a DIY woodworking and home improvement channel. It's just got 1,270 subscribers, so a really small channel. In fact, not probably not that far ahead of mine in terms of subs. What I like about the videos is they're incredibly well made. In the description, it's a, a sort of father and daughter. I think the father does all the woodworking and the daughter does the rest, but some really lovely quality uh, projects on here and very simple things that you can do around the house. So there's all sorts of things from wall hangings to trestle tables to knife blocks. I mean, you name it, everything's on it and it is really beautifully put together. So if you're looking for a sort of smaller channel, a bit like, like mine and possibly some things that you can copy in your own workshops at home, I would recommend this channel as definitely one worth looking at. Mellow Pine DIY, once again, link in the description. My next video recommendation is sort of in the middle channel. It's got about 14,000 subscribers and it is Maker Beach. Um, it's a really nice channel. Uh, the guy that runs it, a guy called Sean, has some really, really good uh, videos and there's a nice mixture of really easy projects you can make, some really good um, sort of beginner woodworking tips, some little tutorials and just some really, really nice content. Now, it is much more like my channel. It's not as polished, and I'm not being unfair, but it's not as polished as a lot of the big boys, but I just really, really like watching um, the videos on there, and they're really interesting to me. Um, so it might be something that if you're a liker, a follower of this channel, you might also like some of the videos. Not one I would sit and watch all of them, I'm gonna be honest, but just the dipping in and out ones, really, really like it. It's a really good video on CNCs that I watched. So it is worth a little look if you're after something slightly different, slightly sort of off the beaten track. But again, at 14,000 odd subs, he's obviously doing something right. So my last recommendation in this month's blog is Maker Beach, link in the description. Okay, so in terms of uh, upcoming tool buys, it's a different time of year um, for the supermarkets like uh, Lidl and Aldi. Lidl in particular are focusing very much on their garden product, product range. So you're not gonna see many DIY tools coming up. They've just had one, which I mentioned in one of my videos earlier in the month. So in terms of what's coming up with Lidl, there isn't a huge amount, um, to be honest with you, but this does give me an opportunity to talk through some of the things that you can buy in Aldi, some of the work zone tools that are actually out right now. Uh, I'm filming this on Tuesday the 23rd of May and these were in the Aldi special buys from this week. And I just wanna draw your attention to a few products that I've either had in the past or have used in the past. And the first one is the cordless rotary sander. Now it's 29.99 this sander, so it's not the cheapest, but I had one of these, it was my first sander, and it was brilliant. When I first converted the garage and put all of my 
uh, insulated um, plasterboard on the wall, I jointed everything with obviously plaster and tape and everything that you can see in here, it was all done with a cordless rotary sander and I absolutely destroyed it. But it was a real workhorse. If you're after like an occasional sander or one you can take away from your workshop, I can't recommend it highly enough. It really is a good sander. The only reason I'm not buying a new one is I currently find myself with three sanders and let's face it, everyone's got a limit on the amount of sanders, sanders they can have. It's a great little sander to get you going. As I said, if you want one that you can take away or just one that you're not too worried about getting mucky and doing those jobs. And at $29.99, it's not a really, really expensive sander to have. So if you're in the market for one, do give it a look out, give it a consideration because it was a really, really good sander. So the next tool is this. It is the Work Zone Hole Saw Set. That's easy for me to say. If you watch my video on dust extraction with my Mitosaur station for last week, you will have seen this set in action. It is a great entry level beginner set. If you're not the sort of person that uses hole saws a lot, trust me, you could do a lot worse than just buying this set and keeping it around. I have used every single hole saw in here at some point in the time that I've had this, and it is really good. Everything's really nicely made, all the drill bits are really nice quality, it all fits together very well and the actual quality of the hole saws is really, really nice. Now, just a little bit of a moan sideways whinge here about the cost of tools. This set, and it's an identical set to the set that I've got, is £10.99 in Audi at the moment. I bought this about two years ago and it cost me £7.99. Now, I know everything's going up but come on. That is a lot of money for it to go up. Having said that, I would still recommend buying it. I've had that for years and it's worked really, really well every time I've needed it. So in terms of value for money, you'll definitely get that. If you use hole saws a lot, I wouldn't recommend it. This is more for the more occasional hole saw user rather than someone's gonna use it a lot. But if it's something that you think, oh, I wish I had a hole saw, that's a set you can go to for a very little outlay of money. Well worth it, I would say. So the last item is slightly unusual one for a woodworking channel. And the only reason why I'm mentioning this is because I've had the experience of using it and I thought it was a really great piece of kit and it's at a very good price. And it's the Ferrix Inverter Generator. Now, ideally, I presume this is I um, aimed at the sort of tent camping market, but if you do a lot of work off of site, then this is a really, really nice piece of kit to have. As I said, I have used it. I do not own it myself, but at the moment, it's reduced by a third. It's down from 149.99 to 99.99. They do have them in shops. Uh, if you're lucky enough to find one, they did have one in my um, Lidl the last time, uh, Audi the last time it was on sale when it was on last year. But it's a really, really good uh, external inverter generator and it runs on uh, diesel. It's diesel powered. Uh, it's Sorry, it runs on petrol. It's petrol powered. It's got a four stroke pet, uh, petrol engine. It says it's got a smooth and silent operation. I wouldn't say it was totally smooth and silent, but it is very, very quiet. It's got a 50C C engine and it's got 700 watts of continuous output power. It is a really, really nice little tool to have. So whether you're going camping or caravanning and you're looking for something like that, or just if you know you're going off site or you do a lot of jobs off site, it's well worth a look because products like this are quite uncommon. And if you buy one from somewhere like Tool Station or Machine Mart, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. Whereas Audi, all of their products that I've had like this are all really, really nice quality. So it is well worth looking if you're in the market for one. And lastly, while we're on this little section on what to buy and what to look for, just a reminder that it's bank holiday weekend uh, this weekend and screw fix always has fantastic sales in the bank holiday weekends. And when you're buying in the sales in Screwfix, they've got a really nice way of looking at the items that are reduced by percentage. I always tend to go on and if I'm looking for something specific, screws or 
you know, a light switch or something like that. I always reorder or relist by the rating from other customers, which is a really, really good way of seeing what's worth buying and what work isn't worth buying. Now, I haven't looked at the sale uh, this year, but I picked up some great bargains in previous years. I got my first Titan chainsaw was on the May Bank holiday uh, sale. I got that then. Uh, I've got a couple of other little bits and bobs. I got a chisel set. Uh, that was on there so really really worth looking at if you're in the market for some tools give it a little check it tends to go live well by the time this video comes out it will already be live they tend to end on bank holiday mondays but sometimes they extend them so if you're in the market or you just want to pick up a bargain just give screw fix a view and see if there's anything there that takes your fancy and lastly, a little bit of audience participation needed for this next bit. When I was at Maker Central, um, Stuart from Proper DIY was really generous with his time and he gave me some really, really great advice, which I'm sure you won't mind sharing this one little tidbit with you because I was talking to him about style. Now, I've looked at quite a few of my videos this month and I tend to find my style's a little bit sort of serious-ish and a bit sort of... Uh, not my, not necessarily my own personality. In real life, I am a lot of fun, honestly. But I would like the opportunity, perhaps, to develop the style of the channel and make the videos a bit funnier. Think more Jason Hibbs than Peter Millard. Not that there's anything wrong with Peter Millard, but I think I'd like to introduce a little bit more of my natural nature. Now, when I get feedback on my videos, I get some great feedback, which is really appreciated. But if you can let me know in the comment comments of this video whether you like the style I use, whether you'd like to see it changed. I'd really appreciate that. And what I might do on one of my upcoming builds is just make the video in the sort of way that I'm talking about and just drop it out there and see what you guys think. Because I think it's important also, and this is something that came from Peter and, um, well, it came from everyone that I spoke to, when you make YouTube content, it's about doing things that obviously people want to see. Now, partly that's down to the projects, but partly that's down to the style. So now is your time to... Give me your feedback in the comments if you like the style, like the videos the way they are. And everyone always says that they like the fact I leave mistakes in. But I don't just want to be known as the YouTube channel that makes all of the mistakes as well. So if you're happy with the style, if you'd like to see more, then let me know in the comments below. And finally, just a big thank you for all of the support that I've had on the channel this month. It is continuing to grow really nicely. If this is your first time at the Garage Workshop, please can ask you to subscribe, like and comment. Another thing I picked up from um, the show that I went to and talking to the YouTubers, not just those two, but all of them, is how important the comments are and the likes are to hit the algorithm. So please like and comment, please subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you're a regular viewer, thank you again so much for watching this week's video. And also please don't forget to like and comment. Next week, we've got a build coming up. And actually some of you know that I uh, work in a school. So it's half term next week. So I'm hopeful that I'm gonna be able to get a bit of a project done. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, a sneak peek of one of my upcoming videos. And it is based around this, Timu. If you don't know what Timu is, or you've never heard of it, you're in for a real treat. I'll catch you on next week's episode of The Garage Workshop. Take care, fellow woodworkers.